Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me for another family Bible class. Such a blessing to know that after all this time, you're still out there, and every Wednesday evening, we're able to get together and to study from God's Word. We're gonna be doing these family Bible classes through the end of summer, and then our plan is that when fall quarter starts in September, we'll be back here for our regular family Bible classes, for our regular children's Bible classes, adult Bible classes. So we're looking forward to that. But for the rest of the summer, we're gonna have this uh, that we will um, make available online. And then we also have our summer series. Every Wednesday evening at 7.30, there'll be a different man of the congregation here. And our, top, our topic this year is God Speaks. And we're looking at the stories in the Bible when God spoke directly to a human being. So you can come and be a part of that at 7.30. Everybody will be here in the auditorium singing and, and, and worshiping together, having our summer series together. And then if you want to um, find us, you can always find us in a variety of sources online. Or you can do this class on Wednesday night uh, when we first broadcast it, which is also at 7.30, and then find our summer series online uh, to enjoy later on. But thank you for being here with us tonight. Well, we're going to sing a couple of songs before we have our Bible class. Let's sing Our God is So Big, and then we're going to sing We Shall Assemble, okay? And then we'll have our prayer. Our God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. Our God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. The mountains are his, and the valleys are his, and the trees are his handiwork too. Our God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. Very good. We shall assemble on the mountain, we shall assemble at the throne. With humble hearts into his presence, we bring an offering of song, glory and honor and dominion unto the Lamb, unto the King. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We sing the song of the pray together. Father in heaven, we're so very thankful to be together again this Wednesday evening to study from your word. And we pray that as we spend time with Jesus, we'll learn more about him and have deeper faith in him and know better how much he loves us. We pray, Father, for every boy and girl, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, brother and sister, friend and loved one, all, everyone who's joining us this evening, either close by or far away across the world, we're just thankful that, that we're all together studying and worshiping together. And we're thankful that you make this possible. Father, we, we have so many worries uh, about things and, and you know so many people are dealing with hardship or they're sick, or they hurt for some reason. And we just, we, we, we pray for them, Father. And, and we, we leave this at your feet because we know how much you love us. But we don't really know how much you love us because you love us more than we can imagine. Help us to remember that all the time. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, I brought my Kindle. So when I turned 50, more, almost 10 years ago now, um, the, the congregation as a birthday present got me my first Kindle. This is my third or fourth, I don't know. The first two or three didn't last very long, but I've had this one for a few years and uh, I've had this cover for a while too because as you can see, it doesn't really fit my Kindle and also, I've had to keep it together with duct tape. And this is unicorn duct tape because Zoe and Noel like unicorn duct tape. And they use my Kindle just about as much as I do. So anyway, but this is what I wanted to show you that I can do on my Kindle. And you know this, you've probably done this already yourself. So I'm gonna turn it on. And um, then I, I'm going to uh, have an Alexa, you know, on my Kindle. And I, I'm gonna ask Alexa to do something, hands off and see if she'll do it for me right now. So I, I would like to hear Baby Beluga. I love that song, like the book, love the song uh, by Raffi, and I'm gonna ask her to sing it, or at least get her to 
have Rafi singing it, okay? Okay. Alexa, play Baby Beluga. Here's Baby Beluga from your library on Amazon Music. Okay. It's coming on because I can hear the waves. Do you like this song? I love this song. I hope you can hear this. If not, I'll sing along. Baby beluga in the deep blue sea Swims so wild and you swim so free Heaven above and sea below And a little white whale on the go There you go. Alexa, stop. See? She stopped because I told her to. Um, there you go. That's what Alexa does. I don't have to touch anything. I just say what I want. If I wanted to, uh, to play the Stars and Stripes forever or or, um, or uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or, um, you know, Claire de Lune. She'll play whatever I tell her to play. And I don't have to touch anything. Do I know how that works? No, I don't. I just know that it does. I don't know how those songs that are in the cloud somewhere, which really isn't a cloud up there, you know, but massive banks of computer memory somewhere. I don't know how in an instant I can talk to that you know, little black pad, and, and it will give me exactly what I ask for. But I know that it can happen. That I understand. And that's why I understand, and you should too, that although I don't understand the way God always works, I understand what we sang today to be true, that our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. I may not un always understand why he does things, or when he does things, or how he does things, but I know that he is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing he can't do. And that really is the lesson of our Bible story this evening, which is taken from Matthew chapter 8. We're going to open our Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to begin with verse 1. <clears throat> Or verse 5, excuse me. Jesus has just uh, come, come down from the mountain. He's, uh, he's delivered the Sermon on the Mount, and he's healed the man who, uh, who has leprosy. We talked about that a few weeks ago. And he's on his way to Capernaum, which is basically where he's staying as his home base for his ministry. It's where he's moved his mom and his, and his brothers and sisters, is to Capernaum. And it says in verse 5, Jesus went to Capernaum, and a Roman army officer, a centurion, came to beg him for help. The officer said, Sir, my servant is lying home paralyzed and in terrible pain. And Jesus said, Okay, I'll come heal him. But the officer said, Sir, I don't deserve to have you come to my home. If you just give the command, I know my servant will be healed. As you know, I am a soldier. I'm in a chain of command. I have soldiers at my command. I tell one of them to go, and he goes. Another one come, and he comes. And I tell my servant, do this, and he does it. Jesus was amazed when he heard this. He said to those who were following him, I can guarantee you this truth. I haven't found faith as great as this in anyone in Israel. I can guarantee you this. Many will come from all over the world. They will eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The citizens of that kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness and people will cry and be in extreme pain there. And then Jesus told the officer, go. What you believe will be done for you. And at that, that very moment, his servant was healed. Okay, so this man was a centurion. He is a Roman army officer. When you talk about who a centurion is, he's an officer in the Roman army. And he's a man who commands a hundred or so troops, sometimes as few as 60, and sometimes maybe even several hundred troops, but usually about a hundred troops, because that's what centurion means. It means someone who's the captain of a hundred. Uh, and these guys, uh, when they signed up to be in the army, and they were made centurions, agreed not to get married or have children or anything until they retired from the army. And so this guy... Uh, has the people who work for him and his soldiers under him. They're really his family. So this guy really cares about his servant when his servant becomes sick. So much so that he comes to Jesus because he believes Jesus can do something about it. 
And he asked Jesus to heal his servant. And so already we know he's a nice guy. Uh, he's a nice guy who has faith. He's a nice guy because he cares about someone else. Someone he has power over. You know, many people would think of their servants as just people who do things for them and not really care. But this guy does. He cares about others, just like Jesus teaches us. To. And he has faith that Jesus can do anything. And we find out how much faith. Because when Jesus says, okay, I'll come to your house and heal him, he says, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. You see, the Jews didn't like to go to the homes of Gentiles. They felt like that made them somehow dirty, you know. Now, Jesus didn't feel that way. But everyone else would think that about Jesus. Not his disciples, but everyone else around. And this man cared about Jesus, too. And he said, I'm not worthy. And I know what it means to have power and to have authority. Because I'm a man who's in the army, and I have people who rule over me, and I have people that I rule over. And if I say to a soldier, go, he goes, and come, he comes, and another do this, and he does it. All you have to do is say the word. I know that. And this amazed Jesus. He said, no one in Israel has had faith like this. And he tells the man, go. Your servant is healed. What you believed in, what you have believed in, has been done for you. And at that very moment, his servant was healed. In the same way I can say, Alexa, play baby beluga, and she does, you know? Um, Jesus could, over long distances, just say for someone to be healed, and they would be healed. That's an amazing thing to think about, isn't it? How does it happen? I don't know, but I know that it did. I know that it did, and I know why it did. Because this man had faith, and because Jesus had power. Okay? And so we learn some important things. We, we learn also, as Jesus said, people from all over the world are going to be in the kingdom of God. Everyone's welcome. But, but the most important lessons we learn are that Jesus has all power. He says so. Before he went back up into heaven, he said in Matthew 28, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Okay? Jesus is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing he can't do. Jesus has all power. And the other thing is, Jesus cares for us. And he wants us to have faith in him. And why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we have faith in him? Since we know that he loves us so much, and we know that he can do anything. Okay. We have some questions to ask. Um, our first question is, and by the way, you can find these questions um, um, on the email that you received with the announcements from this evening. Our first question is, what is a centurion? This man was a centurion. What is a centurion? Our second question is, why did the centurion need Jesus' help? Why did he need Jesus' help? Our third question is, what did the centurion know about Jesus? He knew something about Jesus that he knew from experience because he knew it about himself. What did the centurion know about Jesus? And finally, what are the two things we talked about in class that we know about Jesus? What are two things we know about Jesus which we mentioned in this class? Well, I hope you'll think about those and talk about those. And I hope that if the Lord gives us this coming Sunday that you're with us Sunday morning for family Bible class or, or, or for the adult Bible class and that you'll stay with us wherever you are, either here or at home. Stay with us for worship. We're going to sing uh, Jesus Loves Me and Blessed Be the Time. Thank you so much for joining me in front of the family Bible class. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts.
begotten Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for another evening of family Bible class together. Thank you for the lesson that we learned. Thank you for giving us Jesus to love us and to care for us. And thank you, Father, for giving him all power in heaven and on earth. And help us to trust when we pray to you that he's right there by your side, that he's explaining everything about us, that he knows us because he lived here on this earth. And Help us, Father, to, to, to trust that, 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 that you love us more than we could imagine and that you always do what is right. And so everything we think about, we worry about, Father, we leave them at your feet right now. Father, we're, we, we just, uh, we're just very thankful for the boys and girls, especially who joined us tonight. Keep them safe and help them to do good things every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday.